Let's begin looking at the integrity check series, and we're going to start on the lowest level first. So this is part one of the DBCC check table. One thing that I've had to learn about posting things on the internet is there are a group of people out there that will just copy and paste code without any thought of what it does and run it in their environment and then deal with the consequences later. And so the reason why I point that out is because when I first started um, doing this, I found out the hard way that there are people that would contact me, hey, I, I ran your code and it blew everything up. And I was like, well, why would you run code in this one situation? So this is one of those that unless you really know what you're doing, do not run things like repair allowed data loss in the case of this uh, check table, um, especially. The other thing for when people talk about well, you can run repair rebuild, if you need to rebuild indexes, my best practice approach is do it manual and do it one at a time. And there's a reason for that. One is tracking. Two, if it comes back up with issues, let's go ahead, by the way, and show um, this. So this is an example of running a DBCC check table drop columns. And this right here is running drop columns no index, which is going to exclude the non-clustered indexes. And this is checking the integrity here of a table. But one of the things that I've learned about doing index rebuilds is you want to do it manually because let's suppose the table has multiple problems. And what I mean by that is it infills the integrity check one time and then it infills it another day. Do you see a pattern? And that's very important. You do not want to be getting into situations in which it's just automatically doing it and you're not sure which one was causing the problem or not because there may be a reason for that. But I can't stress this enough in this video that absolutely under no circumstances uh, should you ever run repair allowed data loss unless you are absolutely familiar with the environment and you're absolutely familiar with what you're doing. This is a great example of where let's say that you're storing transactions in a table and we're just going to give a hypothetical example of this and you run repair allowed data loss. Well, there's let's say some corrupt rows and what SQL Server does in resolving uh, those those corrupt points is it literally removes records. But the problem is some of those records are with your, let's say hypothetically, these are big clients or these are individuals with uh, a great deal of money and the transactions that you remove are transactions that, uh, because of that, the people end up losing quite a bit of money. And so the company that you're at end up facing a lawsuit and this comes down to, well, the DBA just copied and pasted code on the internet, didn't know what it does, and oh, that fixed the problem, only to find later on that that doesn't fix the problem. So there are many ways to solve this problem when you run into an integrity check failure, but the purpose of this video is to get more into what does check table do, and what we're looking for is the integrity check. But we do not ever want to repair allow data loss unless we are absolutely familiar with the environment and we are okay with losing data, like for instance, if it's internal and it affects a team, I would really be sitting down and discussing with that team before I would ever think about um, running a command like repair allow data loss. But when it comes to a customer or a client, that could be a lawsuit later on. Again, going back, you know, no index just means it's not going to check the uh, non-clustered indexes as we see here. Um, we'll be specifying that no index and it'll skip those. This is just checking the integrity of the table. It's not specifying any options, so it's not going to run things like repair data loss now, or repair, I'm sorry, allow data loss. If there was an error, it would output a red message saying, oh my gosh, it came into an error, contact your system administrator. And then of course, for index rebuilds, uh, for me, the best practice is to do that manually. If you do see uh, that there is a failure, look at the object ID and then run that manually. But again, I cannot stress this enough for those who just copy and paste code on the internet because if you link to this video, I'm going to say, hey, I told you, whatever you do, unless you're absolutely familiar with the situation, do not under any circumstances run repair allowed data loss when checking, uh, running this DBCC check table.